There we go. Hello, everybody. Hey, happy uh, Thursday. Uh, we are in the the thick of things. We just finished uh, most of your auditions. You might have a couple one-offs uh, coming up at the end of February, beginning of March. But for the most part, you're done. So first of all, congratulations to you. You did it. That is the hardest thing you will do in your life until you like buy a house or have a family. That is just the most amount of stuff. SAT, ACT, uh, school play, college auditions. I have a boyfriend too. Oh, now I don't. All that kind of stuff happening at the same time. So first of all, good on you. Um, but right now is when you're gonna get your decisions back. Um, and so we wanna talk to you about um, not getting caught up in that too much. So I have invited my very good friend and um, mentor to the stars, uh, Caitlin Hopkins. Oh, 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 I don't uh, know about that part, but okay. Caitlin is the head of musical theater at uh, Texas State. Um, and Caitlin, thank you so much for joining me to talk about this. It is my pleasure. And and actually, um, Drew, I agree with you. Like the the hard part of all the auditioning and the preparing and all that's over this this next part of the process is also hard it's just different yes. right it's different hard um i think the waiting is really really hard and um you know it uh, it's hard to sort of let go of of it which i think is actually the solution right it's just to kind of like let it go until you'll you'll know when you know don't worry about it and just kind of get on, uh, on with your life and be happy that you, you know, feel good about about the auditions and callbacks you have. You know, the we always, I always, something that I always say to students is this first, you know, week, maybe two weeks after auditions are done are the hardest because A, like you said, there's waiting, which is, yeah, you know, that's just like the definition of anxiety, right, is like not knowing what's going to happen. But the other part of that is B, you get the no's first, because the no's are a lot easier to write than the yeses, because mm -hmm. there's so much more consideration that has to take place. Um, what do you do when you're waiting and you're getting the no's first? Well, I think, you know, part of what you have to remember is that getting a no from school doesn't mean you're not good at what you do. Right? <laughs> it means it wasn't the right fit. You know, it's kind of like when you audition professionally and, you know, let's say I'm up for a Broadway show and I get down, you know, to the final callbacks. Well, the fact that I was called back and that I made it to the finals is an indication of the level of work I'm doing. The fact that I didn't get it doesn't suddenly make me not good at what I do. It just makes me not the right fit for what they're looking for at that moment. Um, but and I think it's hard to keep that perspective when you get a no, it feels like a rejection, right? It's not. It's just saying, you know, it's not it's not the right fit here. And I know it's hard to trust the process that you're going to end up where you're meant to be, but you will, you know. Um, and I think it's important for parents to have, understand as well that, you know, um, getting a handful of rejections when you applied to 12 or 15 or 20 programs deep, of course, you're going to get some no's. You you threw the net really wide, right? right? But it doesn't mean that you're not supposed to do this for a living. It just means out of 20 programs, like what's the percentage that you would expect to hear yeses from? One or two? Sure. Three maybe? Oh, sure. Right. But sure. at the end of the day, Drew, they only have to go to one school. Like you only have to get into one school, <laughs> right. right? So as long as your list was like a good list, like, yeah, I'd be happy no matter where I get in. Yeah, maybe this is my dream school. And maybe, you know, maybe I like this one better. But like at the end of the day, I hope you all applied to schools that no matter where, you know, which one you got into or ones you got into that you're, that you'll be happy there either way. You know, you're going to get a great education and, and have great experiences no matter where you go to school because all these programs are really good at what they do. Absolutely. You know, and that's that's something that we don't uh, talk about when it comes to like law or med school, like, oh, I got accepted to Harvard uh, med, but not Yale med. Oh, I must stink. Like, no, you got in somewhere, though. So you're probably very good. We just don't do that with theater school. We tend to be a little well, more harsh well, also, ourselves. Also, we live in a culture that says more is better. That's true. That's I'm right. Like, really? Why? 
why is more better? Because it's better, more ego biscuits, right? Like it, it feeds your ego that you got into more schools. Therefore I must be better. Right. Not <laughs> whether you got into 10 schools or one school, again, like, it's sort of like if you read your good reviews, you got to also read your bad reviews when you, sure. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get reviewed in the New York Times. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> if you're going to give uh, power to one thing, you have to give power to everything. Right. So yeah. I would just say have have perspective. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any um, professional like related experience, like in terms of like Broadway or film or TV? Uh, yeah, like 30 <laughs> years of it. <laughs> Can you talk about that? Well, sure. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you don't get more jobs than you get, right? Like the the odds are you're going to audition for however many TV shows or films or, or plays or musicals over the course of a year. And you're probably going to end up doing one or two of those jobs, maybe three, right? So there's a there's a lot of no's in the yeses but if you're meant to do this you're meant to do this right like if you're an artist you're an artist you know um there's uh something that you know when you sign with a commercial agent right they'll they'll often say things to you like look just go on the first 50 to 75 commercial auditions just to learn get the hang of it know that you're probably not going to book until you hit around 50 to 75 commercial auditions and then once you book you tend to, you know, yeah. book a bunch of commercials and the average is right. It's sort of like you first go to New York um, or wherever, whatever city you choose to pursue your career. Um, and, you know, the first six months, maybe you get one callback, one or two callbacks, right? The next six months, you're going to get like five callbacks, 10 callbacks, right? Then yeah. you start booking, right? It's everything is a progression, right? There's no, um, you just have to, to trust that you're good at what you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had so many experiences, you know, especially where you're in like final consideration for something, you know, like you get down to the wire and you're like, oh, so close. But it wasn't my job. Right. Right. It was somebody else's job. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. I I talk about it in terms of uh, baseball. I know there's not a big a big Venn diagram crossover here with musical theater and sports, but um, you know, <laughs> if you go if you hit 25% of the baseballs that you're thrown and you miss 75%, you're probably the league leader on the field that day. Oh, uh, I think that's actually a terrific analogy. Yeah. I really do. It, it's very, very appropriate. You should expect to get, you know, a percentage of no's yeah. and, and not take it personally. Right. It's just not right. about you. You know, they, when we're looking to, to fill a class, yeah. We're taking so many things that it, into different things into consideration. So many things that are out of your control. The only thing you had control over, you did, which was your preparation and, and what you did in the room. Right? You've got you to see a lot part. of people throughout the course of your audition cycle that you go, wow, that was an amazing person. And they will end up somewhere, oh but just not here. Okay. That's the part that's hard for us. I mean, there's a lot of hard parts, but that's, sure. it's really hard when you see so many people that you would love to work with and you would love to have in your program and you can only take however many you take, right? It's really, really hard. I mean, you know, I sit with my faculty and, you know, we're deliberating, maybe we get it down to 40 or 50, the final people that are in consideration for the 14 or 16 slots. And you're like, but I wanna work with all these people. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a decision ultimately, right? Yeah. But it's really hard. And it's sort of that thing of like, you know, well, if if somebody says, people always say no, right? Always, there's you don't get 100% acceptance, right? Right. And so you get to go to one of those other people that you're really excited about. Yeah. Yay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I mean, I, I also still remember people that auditioned really? for us that you know we didn't make offers to because they weren't right for what we needed that year right that i or i was just like oh this is killing me like i'm so sad i really just think that person is so amazing and you get really excited when you hear you know what school they go end up going to yes 
absolutely sort of track them you know yeah yeah that, that's that's a really good point um you know what's in our controls just being prepared um and then going you know full tilt in our you know artistic expression in the audition yeah. and that's all we that's all i can do as an actor for you and you know it, it's a, again to veer back to sports um i might be the best quarterback that you see that day but you need a wide receiver you've already got four quarterbacks hello such a good example it's exactly <laughs> right <laughs> it's exactly right and then every once in a while i'll get an email from someone say hey can you give me feedback i'm like yeah you were br brilliant <laughs> <laughs> um i you were really good like i don't know what to tell you like i can't make you better you were amazing we we just had you know three yeah. quarterbacks and we needed a wide receiver whatever that you right. know whatever that is yeah absolutely um so that's that's important as you uh, oh and also something to remember everybody is that you get your nose first um, you get your nose first because if I'm writing letters and I'm like, wow, that person's super talented, but I don't need a wide receiver. All I have to do is write a no, um, with love. But if I'm writing a yes, I got to, uh, coordinate. Well, with there's the a lot more, there's a lot more hoops to jump through, right? You've got to coordinate with the missions and you got to coordinate with my name. Like there's so many, um, sort of levels to the process that take a long time yes. for us to get through before we can make the call um making the offer also um joe another reason that the no's go out first is honestly because we care and we want you to know so that you can cross us off your list and get on with your life right so you're like okay great it's not going to happen there it's not going to happen here great now I can focus on these two places that maybe, you know, I, I did already get a yes or, you know, I can yeah. visit or, you know, like it, it helps you all to yes. be like, great, just check that off my list, get on with my best life and, you know, wait for the yeses. I haven't thought about that. That's very considerate, um, you know, in. in... So I, tr I try to get the nose out as soon as we know that we don't have a place for that student i try to get those no's out i mean it's it's literally a point of pride for me as that that's great as soon as i know that that we don't have a place for you i'm going to let you and your family know so that you can cross us off your list that's very cool i remember standing in the non-equity lines and waiting for 10 hours to be seen and i was mm -hmm. like rah, rah, rah. but i do remember some other auditions where a producer would walk by and type us out and be like, no, go home, no, go home, no, go home. And I was like, thanks. I can now go do other auditions or I can go get a milkshake on the way home because you just saved me a bunch of time. So getting those no's out early, uh, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. So for the folks who are getting, you know, who are following Caitlin's lead in terms of like trying to help you move on, if someone's gotten, if someone's applied to 20 schools and they've gotten three no's in a, in a row, they're not alone, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> of course not. I mean, you know, I think, I think one of the things that doesn't help you all is social media, <clears throat> right? Because people don't go on social media and say, I got three no's this week. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, I wish they would. Yeah, I wish right. you were just gonna be like, oh man, I, I heard a no from whoever, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's not what happened, is it? Right. Every people go on social media like, I got an offer to blah blah blah. Yeah, you know? right. And and ev the rest, everyone else at home is like, oh, <laughs> I got three no's this week, and That's nobody right. likes me. You know. Um, so, yeah, of course everybody's getting no's. Of course, like it. it it's the law of statistics. It's averages, right. like you said. Like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Well, everyone's running the same race, and you know, <laughs> all y'all who are watching this, y'all are doing great. Honest to God, y'all are doing great. You are, and I have one more little tidbit if it's Please. helpful. Not everybody ends up in a BFA or a BA in musical theater. Yeah. A lot of people have careers and studied other things. My husband got a degree in ec economics from the University of Michigan and had a Broadway career for 20 years, right? So 
Um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many actors I like chose to study stuff, but I'm actually a young woman who I adore um, that we made an offer two years ago, Laura Sky Herman, and we kept in touch and she actually came and did a semester here, but she went to Harvard. Like she got into all these Ivy League schools because she was such a brainiac. And I'm yeah. like, honey, you can't go to school for musical theater. You could just got into like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford. <laughs> have you lost your mind? Like go to Harvard, like what's your yeah. dreams? Like go to Harvard. You, you have a full scholarship, like go study. So you can do this later. Yeah. Like what's the big hurry? And sure enough, like the minute she graduated, she, you know, booked the national tour of Hello Dolly. And now she, I don't know to make it her Broadway DVD, you know, because she's really good at what she does. Absolutely. Ab right? That's, a, that's so a great point. It's just my point is that like, if you're an artist and you're meant to be a storyteller, you're going to find a way to do that. We don't have control over that. That is not within our power. We're just teachers. You know, we don't define you. We don't define whether you're good or not. Yeah. That, you know, like, your journey is your journey. That's it. That's like, it. giving us all the power. We don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't know that about your husband. I, that, how That's funny. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. I, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, a lot of, so, so many artists and actors and that I admire, you know, um, I mean, I, I trained outside of, of a BFA program. I went to Carnegie Mellon for a year and a half and then got a professional job. And then I started taking voice lessons and acting classes. You know, I didn't go back to school because I was working. Right. Yeah. And so, but I kept studying, I kept training. I've kept studying and training my entire career. I never wasn't in a class. Yes. Right. Ever. You never stop training. So that, that's sort of part of the process too. Right. It is. It is. A lot of you know, different I, ways. My, I think we talked about this before. My degree is a BA in like general theater studies, mostly like dramaturgical stuff. Um, cool. And then I graduated and I sort of was uh, uh, um, focused on stage management when I got out of college. Um, and then after a while, I had to like come out of the closet and be like, I'm actually an actor. <laughs> and, but, you know, um, after that, you know, like you said, if you're going to be an artist, you're going to be an artist and you're going to. Oh, yeah, you find a way. Find I mean, I'm, you, you and I have very similar thing. I mean, I worked in I produced for television. I produced for radio. I produced for yeah. theater. I directed. I had my own catering company. I mean, like I was a personal assistant to a rock star. Like I had a bunch of different. Hey, careers. A lot. <laughs> I did. Um, Paul Stanley and Kiss. Uh, so like I, I had a lot of different interests and a lot of different things that I was good at, but I was also always an actor. Right. Yeah. And so you, you know, you, you find your way to do what you love and you do a lot of different things to support that along the way. Well, I can't wait for your autobiography. I am <laughs> ecstatic. Um, <laughs> Oh my god. Well, I'm so excited that you're watching the Star Trek shows. I hope you get to my episode soon. Thank you. I the Corgis. Hello, Corgis. Yeah, we just finished TNG and now we're halfway through DS9. And boy is it good. Um if you want to send some some sweet residuals Caitlin's way, start uh binging uh uh all the Star Trek series. Is, it's on streaming, so she'll get at least a nickel an episode. Yes, go go watch Star Trek Voyager and Deep Space Nine, and, and, uh, or any of the Law and Order franchises. All three of them. Just watch all those deals. Go get some money. <laughs> Caitlin, thank you again. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, it's so good to see you, my friend. Be well, everyone. Hang in there. Um, just know that you're just you're all so extraordinary. I have so much admiration for all of you, you're so brave. And now I'm gonna walk my corgis because they're being very insistent that it's time to go walk them. So thank you, Caitlin. Take Be care. Well, everyone. Bye bye. bye.